Yo, what's poppin'? Welcome to Broman Brapsody, episode number 26. Here at Broman Brapsody, we review cars and motorcycles. I am your host for motorcycles, and the punk is your host for cars. Today, we have a 2021 BMW K1600 Grand America. In today's episode, we are going to talk about some of the features, take it out on the road, give you my thoughts about it, talk about the cost of ownership, and assign it a Broman score. So don't go anywhere. It's me. It's your boy bro and I am your bro man. BMW probably doesn't need any introduction. You all know about BMW cars and all of that fun stuff. When BMW started, they made airplane engines. That's why if you look closer at the logo, it looks like an airplane engine. They manufactured motorcycles before cars. The first BMW motorcycle came out in 1923, and the first BMW car came out around 1928 or the late 1920s. And the first motorcycle that BMW made was the R32. That's why if you look at uh, the current lineup of BMW motorcycles, they have a heritage line and they are, and the models are called the R9T and the R18, so that R is the throwback. Anyway, getting back to this motorcycle, this is a 2021 BMW K1600 Grand America. The K1600s have been in production since 2010 and they are BMW's sport touring motorcycles. It combines elements of a sports bike and a touring bike. And in the current lineup, there are four variants to the K1600. We have the K1600 GT, the K1600 GTL, the K1600B, the B stands for bagger, and the K1600 Grand America. So the Grand America and the B are like siblings. Um, the difference between the B and the Grand America is that the Grand America comes with the top case. Uh, the B is a bagger, so it just has the two side cases. This weighs about 803 pounds. Uh, this, has a, this has a wheelbase of 63, 64 inches, uh, a seven gallon fuel tank, and it has a 1600 cc inline six, which puts out 160 horses and 128 foot pound of torque. Well, let's go ahead and look at some of its features. To the front of the bike, all of the stopping power is provided by dual 320 millimeter discs and a four piston brake caliper. And this bike has a 27.8 degree rake angle. What's the rake angle? Draw a perpendicular from the steering mount, follow the fork tube. That angle is the rake angle. Smaller the rake angle, the more nimble the bike is. And larger the rake angle, the more stable it is on highway speeds. So sports bikes tend to have the rake angles closer to 24 degrees, whereas cruisers are closer to 30. So this splits it in the middle. In the front of the bike, you have that massive air intake down here. You have the Xenon headlamps, with, which, are, which are automatic headlamps, and they provide cornering lights. To the bottom, you have auxiliary driving lights. And if you look closer, this does not have the, usually, the usual fork tube. This is that electronic suspension that adjusts itself on the fly. On your left fairing, you have these buttons and these are for your music or your media. On your left hand side, you have that big, uh, you have that fixed mirror uh, that's mounted on the fairing and it doesn't move. As for the controls, you have the little BMW wheel that's similar to the iDrive that you get on the cars, on their cars. Uh, and this, you can use that to scroll through your menu options. You have cruise control, hazards, uh, the menu button to toggle through the menu. This is your windshield uh, operating button, turn signals, horn, reverse and driving lights. On the right hand side you have the start stop button, the mode selector and the remote locking remote locking of your saddlebags and the tour pack so this bike has a keyless ignition so as long as you have the key fob you can start the bike this is what the bmw key fob looks like and on the top of the tank it says k1600 grand america now when you look towards the front of the bike uh, or the cockpit that i like to call it um, you have speakers you have 
two speakers on each side with like little tweeters on top that's your navigation unit your speedometer and your tachometer and those three screens in the middle they provide you with the menu and a lot of information this feels a little disjointed or it might look a little disjointed uh, like in my indian roadmaster and the harley that i reviewed the harley ultra that i reviewed all of that is in a one is in one big screen and you don't have to look at different screens or toggle through different things so to turn on the ignition all you have to do is press this button as long as you have the key fob in your pocket that starts a bike up uh, it gives you your what gear you're on which riding mode you're on that's your hill assist fuel range temperature time odometer trip odometer music whatever you're playing and then you get all of your lights here and to go through the menu here when you press the menu button here those things change so right now it's in dynamic mode so you can select between road cruise those different info levels trip odometers your navigation you can zoom in zoom out this is for your so this has heated grips and heated seats so you can set your level of heating for your grips then that's for your seat and then you have the settings for the for the motorcycle the audio settings the user settings and all of that stuff you can you can arm your alarm system because this has an alarm so anytime if it's locked and you're trying to move it the alarm's gonna go off if you're riding along on a hot day and you want some air to come in you can just pull this out and that opens up a little channel for air to come through if you want to pop out the gps unit uh when you're parked somewhere you can press this button and that pops this thing right out and you can move the front windshield if you want more air protection <laughs> you get a few power outlets in this motorcycle but none of them are 12 volt power outlets that navigation unit that's not standard that's a 900 dollar option it's a touring bike and this is not a cheap bike this costs about twenty seven thousand. so i would have assumed that those things would come standard the rider's seat is quite comfortable and it's heated the rear seats on this bike are heated as well the heated controls are on your right saddlebag you have this you have the switch for your heated seats it has a nice backrest with speakers on each side it has a pretty standard seating position i'm not hunched over i'm not leaned back either it's a standard position you're sitting upright it's comfortable it has little foot pegs here and it has floorboards for you to stretch your legs as for the rear seat Oh man, this is a big and comfy rear seat. There's a lot of technology that you get with this bike. It's got dynamic suspension, so it adjusts itself on the fly. It's got traction control, cornering ABS, regular ABS, cornering lighting. So if you're going around corners, the light adjusts itself so you can look through the corners at night. Uh, it's got hill start assist, so if you're parked at an incline, uh, you don't have to hold on to the brakes. It'll stay where it's at it's got reverse it's a shaft drive oh and speaking about the reverse let me show you these have saddlebags on the side to open them press on this button pull this lever and that's your saddlebag so this is not a, as big of a saddlebag that you, that you would get on like a harley or an indian but it's a pretty big and decent saddlebag now on the back you have this top case uh, it's a pretty big and decent top case to open that uh, press the button here this pops up the lever and boom you have the top case this can fit two full face helmets and it also has a led light up here like it does not have all of the storage space as a regular touring motorcycle like the like the harleys and the indians and it might not have all the fairing and the amount of wind protection that you get on those bikes but it can do things that those bikes can't this is super quick and it's very very nimble this can do 0 to 60 in under 3 seconds uh, its speed is its top speed is limited to 101 miles an hour bmw says that going above that speed is going to make it very unstable so you know what time it is it's ride o'clock let's go we have another bike with a with a windshield and a console and a dash in front of us it feels like you're in a cockpit um, 
See, I'm 5'10 uh, with a 31 inch inseam and I can easily flat foot it on both sides. Uh, it is a little bit of a taller seat, but it's not bad. And uh, yeah, so we talked about those uh, settings for your uh, suspension settings. And that's what you get. Like you can select rider, rider with passenger or two riders. And what, whatever you select that shows up on this little screen here. That's pretty neat. So we are in dynamic mode. So let's start off this review with a little pull test, shall we? Haha, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> wow, that's uh, that was something <laughs> with the 1600 cc inline six, those 160 horses, and 126 pound feet of torque. All of that comes together, and this thing can go like it's a freaking rocket or something. That was so much fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's take it around a few corners and see, see how it does. Not bad around corners either, is it? Man, this bike feels so nimble. I mean, it is a tall bike, but it feels so nimble and so easy to flick around, you know? And since you are sitting up a little tall, um, you're sitting up a little taller than most touring motorcycles and things like that, you do feel a little bit of a wind draft especially the side winds uh, but it's not too bad it's not like uh, it's unstable or anything it's just a little draft um, and it might hit you every now and then so that's it's a little it, that takes a little bit of getting used to I'm not used to uh, that on my on my Roadmaster so the first time I rode this bike yeah <laughs> there was a little bit of getting used to that uh, but again, like since it's a Beamer and they have all of this awesome engineering that goes behind uh, designing a Beamer and uh, this is this is a 800 some pound bike like 803 804 pound bike But when you ride it, it really does not it doesn't feel like it's all it's all that big and heavy or anything like that uh, so that's kudos to the engineering team. They have done a phenomenal job. See, the balance on this bike is amazing as well. Like for something that's uh, quite tall and quite heavy, this has a very good balance. It's not like it's gonna lean over to one side or the other. Uh, unless you're trying to lean and even when you're leaning this bike it's there's it's not like you have to push it down or anything like that it it, it combines the sport bike elements of uh, just a gentle push and it's it's down it's it's ready to go it's ready to roll <laughs> and the power delivery is so so smooth you guys it's so smooth oh and the engine braking is it's crazy um, see if I'll just let go of the gas you can feel that engine braking and in low and especially in the lower gears uh, you feel it even more even more like it really <laughs> slows you down but yeah that's what engine braking is supposed to do so that's not a bad thing at all now wind protection 
uh, let's talk about the wind protection on this bike like yeah you have this windshield here and you can move it up or down even when you're moving so that happens with this button here that this button and when you press it see it can it goes up quite a bit and now the top of the windshield is right at my eye level so you get a fair fair bit of wind protection for your upper body head torso all of that now there is a fair amount of wind coming in from the two sides and on my legs on my legs down below there's not a lot of wind protection there i mean there is some with these fairings but not a lot and uh, as for the seating position my legs aren't bent in a weird way at all um, the the reach for the handlebars is nice uh, i'm not leaning over and it's not really pulled back either um, so that's one difference i noticed again between the cruisers and uh, let's say a sport touring touring motorcycle uh, like like on my indian roadmaster i'd be sitting uh, sitting back a little bit and the handlebars would be a little more pulled back towards me not so much on this one but by no means is this an is this an uncomfortable position this is quite comfy i'm quite comfy here and especially with those little floorboards on the side where you can stretch out your legs every now and then i think that will help too so is this a good bike uh, for touring or going long distances well um, i think it is um, and now if given a choice i'd love to have like a more traditional tourer for doing long distance touring just because of the added wind protection and the and the luggage space and all of that um but yeah but you can do long distance touring on this thing as well this is very stable it's very powerful you have decent wind protection you have decent technology and the seats are comfortable and this is something you just want to keep riding and you can take it to like mountains and curvy roads and twisties and still have a lot of fun with it because it's just the way this bike is designed is uh you want to have a lot of fun with it it loves to lean it's got a lot of power so yeah you would be just fine going long distances on this bike now uh here's another thing i noticed and i didn't like uh are the speakers it's got a lot of speakers yes but even with the volume cranked up all the way you can only listen to the music as long as you're doing 50 maybe 55 miles an hour or something like that once you go above that or at highway cruising speeds uh, you don't hear anything i didn't hear anything at all and the owner of this bike says the same thing um, and he has a harley ultra the one that i reviewed a few weeks back uh, and that's that's another thing that i didn't like about this bike was the speakers on the indian roadmaster i can listen to my music and blast music even if i'm on the highway or whatever but not so much on this one and speaking of the music here's another fun little quirk of this bike like you can connect your phone to the infotainment screen uh, to the system of the bike but you cannot play your music uh, through the speakers of the bike uh, you can connect it there and it'll play music in your Bluetooth uh, or your Bluetooth module or Bluetooth headset in your helmet but it's not gonna play on the speakers um, I mean there is a workaround you can get a little dongle thingy that you can plug into your USB and will make it work but uh, as it comes from the factory you cannot play music from your phone through the speakers i don't know why that sound that this bike makes even when you're stopped and it's not that chugga 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 sound of a v-twin but it's that little like little humming noise which lets you know that hey i'm here and i'm ready to go <laughs> But see, all of those things that, you know, that the speakers don't, uh, you can't play music to your speaker, uh, the speakers aren't too good at high, higher speeds or highway speeds, the wind protection and all of that, none of that really matters once you twist the throttle and you just see the world around you become a blur.
and uh, that's uh, that's that's what this bike is about you want to have fun with it but is this a good beginner bike uh, uh no 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 and uh, here's a reason here are the reasons why this is a very powerful bike putting out what, 160 horses and that 128 126 pound feet of torque uh, it is a taller bike it is an expensive bike and it is a heavy bike it doesn't feel all that heavy but that's it's still an 800 pound bike and it doesn't feel heavy to me because I ride the Roadmaster which is another 120 or 130 pounds heavier but for a beginner, yes, this is a heavy bike, it's a tall bike, it's an expensive bike, and it's a very powerful bike. So, nope, not a good beginner bike at all. <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to keep riding this for a little more. So, why don't you guys head back to the punk and wrap up this video? Hey, so let's talk about the cost of ownership, shall we? So, assuming you ride 5,000 miles a year, you would need one service done, a BMW recommends a service every 5,000 miles, and that service costs you about $400 at your local BMW dealership. So the tires on the K1600, they don't last you very long. The stock ones last you about 3,500 miles, and you could get a different set of tires that'll last you about 5,000 miles. A set of tires front and back with all the labor involved is about 600 bucks. So if you ride 5,000 miles in a year, you would be looking to spend about a thousand dollars in your annual maintenance. Divided by the number of days, it's about two dollars and seventy-five cents a day. So the K1600 also requires a valve inspection and maintenance at every eighteen thousand miles, and depending upon what all needs to be done to it, it can cost you about one thousand dollars. So let's give it a score, shall we? On the looks, it's an eight out of ten. On the brop, oh, it's a 9 out of 10. On the maintenance, it's high, so if you get a lower score, it gets a 6 out of 10. And on the comfort, it gets a 9 out of 10. For a combined bromance score of 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.